Thanks. Thank you very much for the, the organizers uh, for inviting me. So yeah, as the two talks of this morning, I'll still be in the world of the infinite measure dynamical system. So let me restate uh, a few things about the infinite measure dynamical system, my setting. So here you have your best dynamical system. The only difference you have is that now the measure of your uh, states, uh, your phase space, sorry, is now equal to plus infinity. Okay, I'll ask a few more uh, classical properties for uh, this infinite measure dynamical system so that I can say some stuff. So first of all, for the whole the talk, it will be conservative and ergodic. So this is what you commonly ask, so that Poincaré recurrence will work and this kind of stuff. And furthermore, I will ask my system to be pointwise dual ergodic which you know in the infinite measure case, uh, Birkhoff doesn't work even with another renormalization. But if you go on the other way around by taking the iteration of the transfer operator, then you can still find uh, an almost sure convergence of the, the averages of the iteration of the transfer operator for some renormalization A of N. So this is what you ask. P at K of F to go new almost everywhere to the integral of F alongside new. So of course it's true for all F in L1 of new. And so T hat for the rest of the talk would be the, the transfer operator associated to your measure mu. Okay, so furthermore, a few more property. I will ask A N to be of regular variation of parameter alpha with some parameter alpha belonging to, to zero one, not zero, not one. You can still say some stuff when alpha equal, equal zero or one, but I won't talk about those uh, in this talk. And so just regular variation basically means that I have uh, A of C N over A of N. Okay, it's a discrete uh, sequence, but you can uh, take it continuous, uh, continuous. And so that will converge to C to the power alpha for all C as N goes to plus infinity. Okay, and let me state uh, a last definition. You'd say that a set Y measurable is a uniform set if you have a bit more than this convergence mu almost everywhere. So is a new form set if there exists some function f in n1 of mu so that you have this convergence but a bit more than this. You have uh, <coughs> a uniform convergence when you take points inside your set y. So minus the integral here. Here is the uniform convergence for the measure mu y. Zero as and goes to plus infinity. So it's a bit better if you are, if you know a bit more about infinite measure dynamical system, then you say that uh, Y is a darling tax set if it is uniform for uh, for the special function in A one of mu, which is the um, indicatrix of uh, of Y. If so uniform for the indicator graph. Okay, so now I have the properties I ask for my uh, system. So it will be pointwise dual ergodic conservative and with, a, with the existence of some uh, uniform set. So now what I want to say is the other part of, uh, of the title, where even point processes. So what I call where even point processes is that you take some subset A which is of positive measure. And you can define, so <coughs> first, the first return. So I guess everyone is common with that. So the first return here would be the smallest time. So that you eat A. And still, I, since, since I want the Raven point process, I have to consider the other return times. So define them by recursion. 
which is classically the first return after the gist return time, such that you come back to A. Okay, these, those are well defined since uh, we are in a conservative ergodic setting. Those are well defined almost everywhere and so on. So what is the object I'm interested in? It will be N A with some renormalization gamma, which will be a, a point process. So I take some direct masses at the return times, and what I add is some kind of uh, renormalization here which is gamma, which I don't take explicit for now, but that you have here. So this is the point process I'm interested in. So it's the same way as you do in the finite measure system, but in the finite measure system, what you will take as a renormalization gamma is just the identity. You normalize by the measure of your set because of uh, Katz theorem. But here in the infinite measure context, Katz theorem still works, but it's just tell you that your return time uh, will, in average, take an infinite time to, to get back. All right. So now the question is, what do I take as gamma? And the answer was mostly on, was answered in an article by uh, Roland and Simon Resberger, and so I'm going to, to state it. So you say that gamma is a tight scale for written times in Y. So for Y, which is a subset of, uh, of my main uh, phase space X, if um, the law of uh, the written times normalized by gamma mu of E are so for only the first return. So you take that there are measures, uh, there are measures, and you want this set. So for E, of course, belonging to Y, and of positive measure, so that you can talk about written times. This needs to be uh, tight. Okay, so you have that, and the results they they add. So to tell you that. In the infinite uh, context, things are a bit more difficult. Is that so? Positions, so as I said, by Simon Hersberger and Roland in, I guess, something that was published in 2020. It says that if you have some y in B of finite measure, uh, then there exists gamma a tight scale. For y, so which is good. Once you find the y, then you have a tight scale. The problem is that then it won't be the same for every y. So if you take gamma a scaling function, whatever the one you want, then there exists some y. You can take it of measure one, so that uh, gamma is not a tight scale. A tight scale for y, so you can always find bad sets, which will not appear in the finite uh, measure context. Okay, but what you do is that you need to find good y so that the tight scale will be somehow the same for all the time. So what you have is that a theorem from the same article also. That tells you, okay, now the good sets I have here, I have defined them for that, are the uniform sets. So if y is uniform, then you can take gamma being equal, okay, I, I forgot to define it, but gamma being equal to 1 over b of 1 of s. Okay, let me define here. So b is defined as the asymptotic uh, inverse of A, so basically it means that A, A of Bn would be equivalent of B of An would be equivalent of N, and then you can define uh, these gamma S. What you need to remember is that if An here is a regular variation of, uh, of 
uh, parameter alpha. So let's say, for example, a m is equals to m to the power alpha. What you have to get in mind is that gamma f of s will be s to the power one over alpha. So that's it. That's the type scale you will have. And it's a non-trivial type scale. I forgot to say that. But of course, if you have a type scale here, you take gamma prime, which is smaller than gamma. It will be also a type scale because you normalize by something stronger. But you want the best one in some sense. So that was the, the what the theorem says is uh, what's called so a non-trivial type scale. So now we are happy. We found the good normalization. And from now on, I will only take this as a, as, as a type scale. And so I will have a rare event that lies inside uh, some uniform set. So, OK, now the question I would like to answer is what about the convergence? So for sorry, if I take Bn, to be asymptotically relevant, that is to say the measure of Bn goes to zero. The question is, what about the point process here? Do we have the convergence? So I will use this uh, to say that I have convergence in low. Convergence in low under mu of Bn, so written times, to some uh, point process n. And afterwards, you know, in finite measure, you have written times and eating times. Here it's the same, so you can wonder whether you have the convergence here alongside mu to n. Okay, but that, since we are in the infinite measure context, doesn't have any meaning because our measure is of infinite measure. So how you you get rid of it? You just take the strong low convergence. So where this low, so we've seen that also in, in the talk this morning. So well, this though means the convergence for every probability absolutely continues with respect to mu. Every mu absolutely continues with respect to mu, mu, which is a probability. And then you have this notion. And so what you want to have is some kind of connection which exists in the finite measure context, which was proved for the first written time by uh, Aiden, uh, Lacroix, uh, Aiden Lacroix and Vianti. Yes. And in the, for the point process, this was proven in other papers, notably one by, by Roland. And here it's the same. For the first written time in the infinite measure case, uh, it was already done uh, in this same article. So my goal was first to generalize it to the, the point processes. So here you take y to be, of course, now I always need to be inside a uniform set. You assume that you have Bn asymptotically rare events, so that Bn is included in y for all n. And then what you get is the same thing as in the finite measure, in some sense, is that if you have the convergence of one, so if nb in gamma converges ubn to some n tilde, if and only if you have the convergence of the eating times to some n. And the same as in the finite measure context, and and until uh, determine one one another. No. There is, so you have an equation, another, I think we write well. And there is a connection. I won't write uh, the equation I get because it's really ugly and scary, maybe in some sense. So let me just say what it means for a spatial set. So if I want to have the measure of n up to time t to be uh, larger than d, then it means that it should be equal uh, to the probability of my written process here n tilde between uh, 0 s to be larger than 
to minus 1 minus the probability of n tilde between 0 and s to be bigger than d. Here, so that looks like almost in the finite measure case, but you have a nonlinear rate coming inside here. Here, with the t minus s to the power alpha minus 1 ds. Okay, so that's the connection you obtain, as in the finite measure, as long as you belong in some nice set for all time, then you have the same kind of results with an equation that now depends on, on alpha. So remember, alpha is the regular variation of my uh, renormalization sequence uh, A of n. So you get that. So, <coughs> sorry. You see what will be the most important uh, process in the finite measure case, it's the Poisson point process, the one you want for almost every point to prove the convergence, is exactly the fixed point of this equation. So finite measure, the fixed point, point is the Poisson point process. Okay, in the infinite measure case, since it's not the same equation, you don't have the same fixed point, but you can still find its expression. And in the infinite measure context, the fixed point is the uh, fractional Poisson process. I'm going to define it in a minute. So fractional. Poisson process of parameter alpha. Okay, from now on, this will be called FPP alpha. So what is this fractional Poisson process? So it was introduced in some article by uh, Laskin in O3, who had totally different uh, ideas in mind. But how you can define it? Uh, you can define it you as, uh, so it's a generalization of the, of the Poisson process, and you can define it as a, a renewal process. So as in the Poisson process, but the waiting times now will not be exponential low, but some other low, so with a waiting time, sorry. W Y alpha, which are going to be E D, with uh, that are determined by their Laplace transform. So E to the power alpha again, sorry, uh, is equal to one over one plus S to the power alpha. So for the Poisson process, you can define it as a renewal process when you have uh, I A D uh, waiting times that follow an exponential law, that would mean here you take uh, the Laplace transform of an exponential law would, be, would mean to take alpha equals to one. Okay, so the main thing I want to say, so you have this nice generalization. The main thing that is important is here that the waiting times here are not infinite. So then, okay, you will come back at some point, but it's an infinite number of time, which is coherent with the Katz theorem. So this, let me draw a picture of what it looked like. It would look like, like something like this, where here you have w1 of alpha, w2 of alpha, all following the same law, independent. So here is my fractional Poisson process. And it's the fixed point of this equation. So in some sense, it would be the most important, the central uh, process that will appear in the infinite measure. So now that I know what kind of, it would be the, the central process, the question <laughs> you can wonder, Okay, does it really appear in the infinite measure dynamical system? And uh, the answer is yes. If not, I wouldn't have defined it. So, and you can ask what are the conditions that uh, you can get, you can need, you're going to need, sorry, to get the convergence to this uh, fractional Poisson process. So, now, let me 
state a theorem. So again, I'll ask why to be uh, a uniform set. I always need to ask that. So I hope you understood now that I always need to take a uniform set to take my asymptotically relevant uh, BN to be included within my uh, <coughs> within my uniform set. And I'm gonna ask that there exists some delayed function to n going from BN is taking integer values so that I have a gamma measure. So let me write the conditions and then explain them to you. So first you need to have this convergence to zero. Second, you need to have this convergence to zero. Third is not a convergence, but you need the transfer operator iterated to this delay time in the Cassius over mu bn. This needs to lie in some set y for u, sorry, for all n uh, larger than one. And u just needs to be, uh, is a compact subset of L1. Okay, so now that I have my three conditions, so let me state the, the end of the theorem. Then if you can check that, you have the convergence of your written time process and the mu, on the, the stronger of mu, to the fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha, and also the written time, since before the, this equation and the fractional Poisson process is the fixed point, the, the written time process will also converge to the fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha. So okay, you have that. Now let me explain the, the condition I have. So basically what you, you're saying is that you want to start from your, uh, for your written time uh, process. So you start from Vn. Here you, you see you have uh, the, um, <coughs> sorry, the density of the measure induced on Vn. And what you want to have is that you want to take some delayed time, not look at the first to n time, start to look at your written times, your process from the, the time to n. And basically what those condition means that if you waited some time to n, then your density, so here the, the operation of the transfer operator would mean the density of the to n iteration of uh, the measure mu of bn says that it's nice. It's a nice function. It, it lies inside uh, a compact set of L1. So it's nice and then you can induce and have good results. And basically the other two condition says that, okay, you've waited time to n so that you can get nice, uh, uh, nice measures, but you need to make sure that you didn't forget anything before time to n. So this is what uh, this condition is for. You need to make sure that before the time to n, you haven't had a return to your set. And the other condition says that, okay, you can take to n whatever you like, but if you want this delay time to disappear in the limit, it needs to be small. Okay, and so just to say, I didn't invent those conditions. Those conditions were used, uh, so exactly in the same condition from always the same article from Simon Reisberg and, uh, and Roland for the first written time. But in fact, they are enough to get the convergence of the whole point process. So, sorry? Yeah. It doesn't appear. It appears because of this renormalization here. Because you, you're going to use the fact that you lies inside the uniform set. And then, because the renormalization here is not 1 over n in the finite measure case, it's 1 over I, a n. So, you have this upper appearing always. And so, it, it's different. 
So that's why I asked here in the beginning, you need to have some kind of regular variation of your AM. And so in the infinite measure context, it can, the alpha kind of measure the way you are infinite. The, the smaller alpha, the more you are infinite in some sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that's okay. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. Because I, I asked since the beginning, so all, you, you need to assume that all these boards are completed. Yes, so yes, it's, it lies inside the fact that you are the uniform set and inside you have the alpha coming at some point. Okay, so now it's good. I found some conditions so that I have a convergence to the functional Poisson process, I have the convergence, uh, uh, an abstract theorem also saying that uh, the thing I want to have now is find examples where actually I can prove those conditions and have the convergence to this uh, fractional uh, Poisson process. So now the example, I guess everyone knows it, but it's again uh, our nice family of uh, manville pomo maps. And so here again they are. So let me define them once again. So you have your map T from 0, 1 to itself, such that T of X would be equal to on the first branch, I will call the first branch T1 of X, X plus uh, 2. X plus 2 to the power P, X 1 plus P, so for 0, X, 1 half, and the second branch T2 of X would be equal to um, 2X minus 1. So you have this nice family, and if you want to have uh, <coughs> an infinite measure, then I will ask P to be uh, greater than one. Okay, P equals one is uh, also infinite, but as I said, with P equal to one, you will have uh, alpha here, which will be equal to one, so I'm not taking into account this case. You can do something, and actually you can find convergence, but I'm not going to explain them. Yeah, so here alpha will be equal to one of these. So, okay, let me draw a picture of my function. Here. And since we are in the infinite measure context, your map looks more like this. <coughs> okay, so a lot of things are already known in that. So for example, all the first thing that I asked my system to have, so T is pointwise dual ergodic, uh, with a n, which is of regular variation of parameter alpha. Of course, I define the alpha so that it's true. So it's of regular variation uh, with respect, sorry, with respect to mu, which is absolutely continuous. Uh, with respect to Lebesgue, and you even have that y, every set y that is of the form C1, so you just forget the point zero, which is the point that causes troubles to our map, every set of this form is a uniform set. So <coughs> that's what you have, and even you have more, okay? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> you need to, to have C strictly positive. It's not like there is no point. So here, C is strictly positive, and even what you have, you can even know the the formula of your uh, uh, density of your invariant measure, and you have that rho of x is uh, asymptotic to some constant, I would see what it is here, uh, to x to the power one over alpha. So of course, uh, by the way, it's, just, it's also true in the finite measure context, you always have that. 
the only difference is that in finite measure, uh, here you have, so it's equal to x to the power t, which will be integrable in zero, and which is not the case in the infinite measure. So O of x looks like, uh, looks like this. Okay, so now that I want to define that, I can ask really what was the main question here. Uh, and the goal also of my PhD is to find uh, region time statistics to some point. So the question that I have in mind, okay, it's also to make appear the fractional Poisson process, but it was already done in some sense, even if it wasn't written as the fractional Poisson process. But the question for me is to find, so to define a point zeta belonging to zero one, you take some kind of rare events, Bn being equal to uh, the ball uh, around zeta. So let me take it since balls are intervals here. So you, you would like for some Rn that I won't specify here, but some Rn, Rn going to, to zero as n goes to plus infinity. This is your rare event, and you want to see what happened for the convergence of, uh, of the process. So let me start by recalling what, what happens in the finite measure case. Finite measure, so it was done by uh, George, Anna Christina, Mike, and Sandro in 2016, I guess. In the finite measure, what is the picture? So <coughs> you're taking, you have the so-called so dichotomy. If you take zeta, uh, which is non-periodic, then you have a nice behavior as, so the normalization here in the finite measure context, you have your normalization, of course, which is the identity, uh, converges uh, to, with respect to mu, and also for the written times, to a standard Poisson point process of uh, intensity one, which you take so uh, rare events being centered so <coughs> around your point zeta. If you ask now that zeta is Q periodic, then you have the creation of cluster. We've talked a lot about this, but we see that it has a different behavior because of the periodicity, and then in the end, so converges. This time, for strong law also true, but for the law to a compound Poisson process of parameter theta, of law, uh, geometric law of parameter theta, where theta uh, is the extremal index. And in, it, in this context, you can compute, compute it really well. So theta is equal to one minus one over the derivative of your point along side its orbit. Okay, and there is a last point that is causing troubles. It's the point zeta equal, equals to zero. So you take a neighborhood of the fixed point. So here, of course, zeta is Q periodic, but zeta is not equal to zero. And because here in zero, once you get there, you will stay for a long time there because it's a neutral fixed point. For well, theta equals zero, you can still compute the extremal index, but the extremal index equals zero. That means that once you get there in the limit, you stay there for an infinite number of times. So you can't have the convergence of your point process. It does not converge. However, you can still find some convergence for the eating time process. And so that's what I'm gonna cite here. Uh, it says that if you take the measure of the annulus around your neighborhood here, times the written time to Bn, so here recall that Bn is equal to some uh, set zero epsilon here in this, con in this context, then with this renormalization, it still converges to an exponential law uh, under mu as n goes to plus infinity. So you, you still find the exponential as a limit, but you have to take another renormalization. And this renormalization, I state it like that, 
and also state it this way because I'm going to use it afterwards. It's the measure of the pre-image by the second branch of my set here. So see, I have uh, my uh, small neighborhood here, which is not so small, but in the finite measure context, then the renormalization to get that, you still get an exponential loop, but the renormalization you have to take is only, so here, the renormalization of this set, which is of course a small O of the n. Otherwise states it because of the invariance of the measure, it's the measure of the other pre-image of zero. So zero is, it's, is its own pre-image, but one half is also the pre-image of zero. And so you have to take this measure as a renormalization. But in the end, you still get an exponential law. So now what is the picture in the infinite measure context? So first, I'll need to erase some stuff. Yeah, what do I erase? This. So now we want to see what's the different picture. Does it work also? in the infinite measure context, can you get all the points? Or do you have some strange behavior? No. So, Right, so in the infinite measure context, I'll need to have uh, a bit more of a definition here, I didn't say, but you can define, so classically you take, so y being equal to this set one half one when you induce on it to have a nice thing and the classical partition you can get C prime I will take as a cm plus one cn, so the family of intervals where cn is the pre image by the first branch uh, to the power minus m, so are the pre images following through the first branch. So y would be c1, c0, and uh, so on, yeah, so you will have those intervals afterwards. So it's the classical partition you have when you want to build a, a, a young tower of the, uh, uh, on your, uh, <laughs> on this Manville Pomo maps. So I'll define this uh, C prime thing. And so now I can state uh, the theorem. Okay, let me mention that for almost every point, Okay, there was already a, an existing result, which will not surprise now, is say that for almost every point, you have that n bn, so you fix almost every point zeta, n bn, now bn is associated to my point zeta, so here I will take c prime n of zeta, as bn, so you take the cylinder shrinkings to your point zeta, it is well defined for almost every point, then this converges to the fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha, and this was done in an article by uh, Penn, uh, Sossel, and Zweimuller in 2018, something like that, when it was published. I don't remember exactly the date, but they had for almost every point which is now I hope I convinced you that it's the law you want to have as a limit for almost every point because it's a fixed contractual equation that's really the central law you get for a raven point processes in the infinite measure context. So my theorem is that I will state gradually. So first you take zeta being not a pre-image of zero. Because you see, as in the finite measure, already the point zero was a bit uh, the one that 
was a bit annoying. Now, in the infinite measure context, it has, it has no reason to change. So let me assume first that the zeta is not a preimage of zero. So basically, it means that, uh, meaning, you can state it otherwise since uh, the combinatorics of our Manville polynomial map is nice, meaning that Cn of zeta, uh, Cn prime of zeta is well defined for all n. So the point that where it's not well defined are uh, zero, the pre image of zero or uh, zeta equals to one, which is of course not a pre image of zero, but the point one won't cause any trouble as it will behave like any other good points in this set. So what you get is that it's the same. You have the dichotomy applying. So zeta is non-periodic. Recall that bn is equal to the nth remainder around zeta. Then you have the convergence of your relevant point process towards the fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha. And this is true alongside the strong convergence and also for the written times. If zeta is periodic, of period to periodic, okay, then the same behavior appears as in the finite measure context. Because of the periodicity, for topological reason, you will come back in uh, instantly, and thus you will get some compound process. And so Bn is the same, and you have. It's the same, of course, associated to now my periodic point zeta. And now it converges, as in the finite measure context, not to the fractional Poisson process, but to the compound fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha with normalization gamma of theta and the low geometric of theta. So basically, it's the same picture as in the finite measure. Why? Is because in the finite measure, why do we have a compound Poisson process? Is because of the periodicity. But the periodicity is only a topological reason. It doesn't change anything if you are in the infinite measure context or in the finite measure context. You come back immediately. So you have the same thing. You will ask when you come back, when you have a mass uh, at some point, then you have this low geometric uh, of parameter theta. And theta, by the way, is the same, always the same theta EY, so the extremal index. And theta uh, is equal to one minus one over the derivative alongside the periodic uh, the, the periodic orbit of zeta. So <laughs> you have that. You have this uh, thing. And so now the question is: What about those pre-images uh, of zero? So the first one we would like to have is the point zero. Okay. So. Now, z2 equals to zero. Okay, so bn would be some kind of, a would be some relevance zero to cn. So we call that cn are the preimages of one, so cn goes to zero. So if you can, you take zero to cn, it will be a small neighborhood of zero. Okay, the first thing you can say to me is, well, this is completely stupid because bn is not an asymptotically rare event because in, we are in the infinite measure context. So mu of bn is equal to plus infinity for all time n. So we can't talk about written time statistics. But the fact is that since we are not looking of the strong low, so by the way, uh, for the point zero, it's the same as in the finite uh, measure context, no hope to have the convergence of the point process, because if you had an infinite cluster in the finite context, here, your cluster will also be infinite. So no way we can have the convergence for the, for the um, uh, point process. But we can wonder whether we have the same kind of convergence as we have here with another renormalization. And what happens is that, okay, the measure is now of measure infinite, but for all, and you absolutely continuous with respect to mu, so new probability. Now Bn is now back again in a synthetically rare event. 
So it does make sense to look at the, the return times, and we can draw as a, a point process. This map will actually be a point process when we take from starting from a measure node that is a, a probability. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's better when it's there. Yeah, sure. So uh, goes to zero this time. Okay, and what happens? Actually, it was done so in a paper by Roland again from 2008 that was saying, okay, you have that. And you can find the same thing. You can find another renormalization. <coughs> so the other renormalization, that's why I stated it in the first one, you can state it like that as being the measure of the pre-image by the second branch. So here's the same set, which now is an asymptotically rare event with respect to even our measure of mu. Here, you take, sorry, I forgot to take the measure of this set. You take the measure of this set, you take the return time to set here, and then it converges low of mu to some low j alpha. And j alpha, not so well, not so much properties are known about it. We just know, again, it's a Laplace transform, which look like this. So, yeah, I'm not going to explain it. I'll write it if you want to look at it, but <laughs> it exists. That's a good point. <laughs> so you have that. And the most uh, thing that you see that things are becoming stranger in the infinite measure context because, okay, again, let's do the parallel with the finite measure context. We had another renormalization, but we still had the convergence to the exponential law, which is nice because it's the same behavior as the other points. Here, I have the convergence to the low J alpha, which is different from the low that you would expect in the infinite measure, which is the waiting time of the, <coughs> the waiting time here of the fractional Poisson process. But they are different, and they are even more different. We had the expectation here that was equal to plus infinity, and here the expectation of J alpha it's finite. Why it is finite? I have heuristically why now it's finite, whereas for other um, uh, rare event, uh, asymptotically rare events, we had to wait an infinite number of time become, before coming back there. Here now we have to wait in the limit only a finite number of time. Why? It's because this neighborhood, asymptotically rare event, is here exactly where everything goes bad for the map. So as long as you haven't written to that, it means before this time or end, you still don't see the point zero. So you still behave like it was a nice function, okay? Like it was a nice map or something like that. And then you will hit there. But if you want your return time not to be integrable, you have to hit there uh, as soon as possible in some sense. And so that's why you get this uh, <coughs> uh, finite mean. And so, okay, now we can go back. We have zero. What about one half? Okay, now one half. Uh, I will take Bn as the neighborhood, some kind of the pre image of zero. So you take the right neighborhood of one half. So with some radius Rn that will go to zero, I'm not uh, explaining really what it is. But you want, okay, now you have the point one half. What happened to these neighborhoods of one half? And basically, if you want to come back to, to zero, then the only way to come back to zero is to go through one half because of the nice combinatorics of our uh, Mandy Pomo map. So you go through one half. So basically, you have the same results for one half. So now, gamma, but this is now the measure of my set Bn. So now it's a nice renormalization. Convergence, low of mu to j alpha. But now what is nice is that one half now belongs to a uniform set because every set of this form is a uniform set. So now I have the connection between the eating times and the return times. And thus I can think about the return times here, so RBN, then I can speak about that. It will converge uh, with respect to, so for the return times around one half to some low J alpha tilde. And this time, J alpha tilde is of infinite mean. <coughs> but you can get more than this. 
you can get that since I'm interested in. Now, there is not an infinite cluster at the point one half since it's not periodic. So you can wonder what happens to the point process. Yeah, so the point process uh, here, there's, con there's converge uh, with respect to mu bn to uh, the point, uh, to the a renewal process of low g alpha two. So you get basically, you have some kind of independence when you, once you've come back there. So now my point process in the end looks like this. I have g alpha tilde, g alpha tilde, g alpha tilde, and so on. And the eating time point process also converges, but this time to a g alpha delayed renewal process of parameter g alpha tilde. So because the eating is different, is integrable, then, okay, let me go. Picture here. Now you still have those g alpha tilde, but only the first written times, you get the j alpha, which goes like this. And if I have one more minute, maybe I can, I'm not gonna do the nice way, but just to finish it, you get the full picture. So now for the point one half, you still have the convergence, but you see it's really different from the fractional Poisson process. Whether in the finite measure context, for those kind of points, you still have nice written that will go towards uh, a Poisson process. Here it's not the case. And so to conclude, what you want to have, if you take the pre-images of one half, so I'll say theta belongs to t minus k of one half, the k pre-images of one half, then you will go backwards and says you get some kind of uh, some thinning of it. So you can define so bn here, I'm taking some pre-images, so we look like zeta, zeta plus rn, for some rn still going to zero. And what I have is that the measure, the very even point process according to the measure of bn, so for the, the written times, here we go to a theta thinning t minus one over alpha rescaling of uh, of uh, my point process, so of parameter g alpha two. So what I call so here is thinning here is rescaling. So thinning, it means that independent thinning, so you choose with some probability tau to keep, if you, once you have a point, you choose with some probability tau to keep it or to drop it. And then rescaling, you have your point process that looks like this, since you have uh, taken a thinning, the point will appear more rarely, but then you, return, you re, rescale the time so that it will look like something for the converging. So tau, actually, you can, uh, you can compute it uh, exactly. Okay, I'm not going to define it. And just the last result to say that it somehow it's current is that when so proposition, which now is a probability proposition from uh, let me say the names uh, from Gorenflo and Menardi. in 08 says that if you take, uh, okay, it's a more general uh, results that they have here, I can put it as a color corollary here, is that this uh, toe thinning and rescaling, so you will rescale that when you take two equals to zero, so you keep points with very small probability, so you will uh, really small points, but you rescale by a really strong uh, rescale in the end, in the limit, this converges to the fractional Poisson process of parameter alpha again. Basically what it means for our points here is that tau will go to zero as k will go to plus infinity. So as long as you are a pre-image, your pre-image uh, 
you won't have the fractional Poisson process because you are a pre-image of one half and that's a pre-image of zero. So you will get where the maps goes wrong in some sense with the infinite measure. But the further you go away, the, the less the influence of this, uh, this point zero will be seen in the limit process. It will be seen at all time, but in the end, it's less and less seen. And I think I can stop here. <laughs>